everybody. My name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. I have the sweetest little card for you today. Um, my life's been a little bit crazy. There's some stuff that I wanted to tell you for a few days now, um, but we haven't been able to. And then today we finally, um, I talked to Sarah Douglas, who is the CEO of Stampin' Up! And our event, which I've been sharing for oh, over a month now, we're having an event later this month in just a couple weeks, um, literally just over two weeks, um, 35 ways to celebrate Stampin' Up! This year, Stampin' Up! isn't having any um, general in-person events. They're having a leadership event, but not just any general events. Um, but they're having 35 demonstrator-led events throughout the world that somebody from the Stampin' Up! Um, leadership team will come up and help host. And the reason they're doing 35 is because it's the 35th anniversary. And our event um, later this month is the kickoff for all of those. So Sarah will be coming both to our shoebox swap on Saturday night and to our Sunday event. So we are so super excited when you get to have Sarah come to your event. It's not a huge thing. So it'll be some nice intimate time to get to know her and for everybody um, that sometimes literally only gets to have a picture taken with her and walk by. So really, 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 really looking forward to that. And we had hoped that maybe we'd be able to get the announcement up because we did open it. It's a demonstrator event, but we'd opened the Saturday to customers um, of Stampin' Up!, but we weren't able to say yet that it was happening. And so then we had to close registration to start getting catering and all of the numbers and start making our um, take and make packets and stuff. So I've, uh, part of my time's working on that. I have been working on club. I've been working on my retreat. I'm working on my VIP packages and my husband. I'm going to use some new dies today and I can't show them all to you because he cut the project. So if you're getting a VIP project from February, um, they're going to go out in the mail tomorrow. Those dies are downstairs. The project I'm going to show you today is super, super cute. I'm going to use three online exclusive products. And I do want to tell you that the one I showed you yesterday, the Irresistible Blooms bundle, it's on low inventory. It's the one I'm featuring in my card club. So if you're in card club and you haven't told me that you want it yet, you need to tell me soon because it will be on back order soon. Once things are, once we know they're on low inventory, then they tend to sell out really quickly after that. Um, but I'm going to show you the new, the new growth takes time because you know me and I love to color and this one's just really fun to color. It's also very springy. I love the font. It's just a super cute little set. But then when I pulled it out, because I, I looked at a bunch of papers from the annual catalog because we're getting ready to get those last chance lists. And I thought there, there's got to be something in here that's cute. And then I came over and sat down and I laid it down and it matches the Hello Irresistible paper that's in Card Club. So I'm like, eh, I'm not going to look for something new because it literally matches my Card Club paper. So if you have that paper or if you want to get the paper, it matches this. So this is an online exclusive. It won't ever be in the catalog. But um, if you go underneath this video, if you're watching on YouTube or on my blog or if you're in my email, you can get back to it. Um, it's on my website to purchase. Then I'm going to show you the new Radiating Stitches dies. And this is, I'm going to use, you can see here, the cutout shapes that have stitching around them. So here are one, two, three, four. And then here's the one that we're using on the card now. And then the one that is in my VIP project is one rectangle larger than that. So it's it's almost a card front size. Um, so we, those of you that purchased from me in February will get to see that in a video soon and then I'll use it on something else in a bit. So those are the two products that you haven't seen yet. And then if you haven't caught the video or seen the card club stuff, my retreat cards are here. Oh, yeah, if you're not doing the retreat, I'm sorry because they're so cute. Um, but this is the Hello Irres Irresistible Paper. So we're here. We'll pull this back over here. Look at the leaves on this. They're like the same leaves. So once I realized that the leaves kind of matched, I'm like, why am I looking for other paper? This is beautiful paper. And I am going to use, let's use this piece here. Because that looks like spring. Doesn't that look like spring? I was going to use one of the new folders. And I'm like, no, keep it simple. Because then I got to get back to all of my paper cutting and all of my event planning. Um, sometimes, you know, when I get overwhelmed, all I really want to do is stamp. 
and I can, um, I shouldn't do that. I need to see it because I need to show you guys stuff. But then I have like retreat projects and I'm like, no, that's work. I just want to stamp for fun. I'm going to use gray granite because people keep doing what colors do you think are going to leave in the color refresh. And people keep putting gray granite on it. And I'm like, stop it. It's my favorite color. Is it gray or is it brown? It looks gray, right? Because it's gray granite. I'm going to use it for the tree trunk. And you're going to be like, that's brown. It's. I know it's like a cement color. It's. This is going to be our card base. have this be the card base and then this is going to be here I'm gonna cut this four by five and a five and a half because I want to see as much as the, of this as I can so let's trim this this because this paper comes six by six so do this and I'm gonna do a squidge bigger than four but not much and if you saw the card I did yesterday when I cut that off we used that so go back and watch that because it does use this paper and then I'm going to do just a tad under five and a half. So there's ever so slight of a bit of, of gray granite. So we've got that. And then I am going to use the Fluid 100 watercolor paper so I can paint in my tree. And I'm going to take this over and I'm going to do it first because this is a red rubber stamp. So it's not easier I think to do it this way so let me run this through so see what they do it it leaves a whole thing it's not a frame but it puts that fun stitching all the way around it let's do our stamping I have memento this fun little tree get up and the nice thing is is this one this rectangle fits just perfect tree-wise. It gets a tiny bit onto the stitching either side, but not a whole lot, so you don't have to worry about it. I was holding my cats yesterday. I have two girl cats, and they both want to be held at the same time. And something ran through the front yard and scared one of them, so they both ran. So we have the tree. And then I'm going to take this little piece here and stamp the watering can but anyways I have scratches all over my hands and they, they aren't cats that scratch ever it's just because one of them got spooked and they both flew out of my hand so stamp the little watering can and then I'm going to take my designer series paper and I'm going to stamp the words down here at the bottom the font is just beautiful and it'd be um, great for graduation for mother's day I'm going to do the one that says growth takes time All the way down here at the bottom. So I have lots of room up there to put my image. Sometimes I have people asking me because I don't put my stickers on. I don't like to put the stickers on because I do so much stamping. I just like to put them on, wash them off, and get them on and off of my box super quick. So let me pull my thing out of the trash here and I will show you how I put them on. I laid it on here first and you can see that they were crooked. So it starts out crooked and then I keep kind of adjusting it on here on my block until I finally got it straight. And then I do it so it's so I know that when this is straight, it's stamping straight. And then that's why I can put it on here quickly and still stamp and not need my stamp apparatus. But it helps to have a lined piece of paper and you can buy this paper in the catalog. I showed you another trick to using it yesterday. You can also buy the bigger sheets that you see some demonstrators use. I'm always in awe of the girls that can do that because I don't have room on my desk <laughs> to do the larger ones. Uh, I guess I'll pull that back out of the trash because I don't have a scrap piece lying here to put underneath. I moved it because you can see it has the water on it from when I watercolored a second ago. Now, if you don't have a water painter and I have, and you've watched my videos recently and I haven't convinced you to get one, I can't believe that. So let's start with um, sea foam because we have the sea foam and the granite that we are our colors. I'm going to go ahead and just cut this to make it smaller so it will fit here as I paint. And then I'll just trim it all the way out in a minute. So sea foam is a very light color and you can squish it on here. And I did it the other day because I used it in the greens. I don't remember. Oh, I think maybe in my card club card. 
Um, but it works faster if you get the refill and you just put the refill in here because then I don't have to keep squishing it to do when I'm going to do such a large area. So let's start with this. And it looks like it's going to be really dark, but even pulling that in there doesn't make a dark green, as you can see. So I'm just going to quickly brush the colors onto my leaves. And because it's a light color, if you don't have, if you're just working with the paint that's in there, you can't really do what the technique I like to do where I start with a color and then work till it disappears so they get lighter because you get like two leaves out from the soft color and then it's gone. This way at least I can do maybe five leaves. And I haven't really mixed it much with water because it is such a light color. Seafoam is another one of those colors that people think might leave. I think some of the papers that have colors in them that just came out are a little safer. So I don't think seafoam is going anywhere, but what do I know? That's just a guess I make because it's in this paper. So we, let's get rid of that color. Now let's do our tree trunk. So we want the gray granite, which is gray, right? Because it has it in the title. But it's a very, is it gray, is it brown? I, lo I love, 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 love this color. It is my, one of my favorite. It's my favorite neutral by far. Because it's just really, a really, really fun color to use. So I'm going to color you in my tree trunk. And I'm going to start my darks with this everywhere that the Stampin' Up! Artist has given us the lines. And then as those start to get lighter, then I'll just brush that on. And that's really when you can start to see the brown tones come out. And especially when you have, when you put it on some, top of something that's brown, it really shows that brown. Lighter it gets, the grayer it gets. So you have a really fun little two-tone thing that you're working with here. I'm gonna put a little bit more water in it now as I get the smaller things up there so those top limbs aren't as dark. When you color in these small areas, even though I'm using one of the smaller brushes, you don't want to have a ton of water because it'll go right outside the lines. There's nothing holding it in the lines. And this is kind of a whimsical design. So you can see I didn't stay inside perfectly on my lines on the leaves, but you don't want it to be as if a kindergartner painted it in for you. Although this would be a fun stamp for you to stamp and then let your kids color in to make cards for people. And I'm gonna go back over these areas with now that I have full strength, because that was full strength before, but when you start going over with double color, then it gets a little bit darker. Oops, there's a whole leaf that I missed. We'll have to go back and get that in a second. And then we'll get our little watering can. There's a smaller tree. There's kind of like a cherry looking thing or a, some individual leaves. I'm not sure what the little, little flower bud, I'm not, I didn't pay too much attention because I wasn't using it on this. See, I think this is really does have that brown tinge over here. And then give this one last little look. That leaf is really bothering me. Sometimes when you miss something, you I, like I literally didn't see that leaf, and now it's all I can see. Okay, clean that out. And again, if you haven't seen me do this, this has a lot of water in it because, but because I can't talk of the way our stamp sets close. It goes this way, the water is staying down there, so it just dries on its own. I'm gonna get my um, leaf real quick before it bothers me any further. Just add that there. And then let's do just a tiny bit of Blushing Bride just for our little heart on our watering can. And then I have some balmy blue and I do need my um, 
granite again. I'm going to go ahead and do my granite. When I did it before, I did blue first, but since this already has it in here, you want to get a lot of water, water for this, and that kind of helps soak this up. I don't like floating images when I have a panel like this, so we're just going to build the background. But I want it to be light, and I want to kind of keep it inside that stitching. So, there we go. And then the blue will be some water and some sky. Again, I don't want that floating around in there. I just touched it with my thing, but that's okay. First, we'll get it to be nice and wet. It's easier, I think, if you get the big areas first with water. Get some more water in here because this can be a pretty pale sky. I just don't want it to be floating. Make sure you bring it down so it touches the ground. But they don't have to touch each other because sometimes if they touch each other, your color will run one into the other. So let that first little layer down there kind of soak into the paper a second before you pull this one in. So now we've got some blue there. We'll let that set a second. And then I'm gonna come over here. Get some water. Let that dry. And you can see inside the tree, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the darker and just kind of dot some of the color in there. I don't wanna smear it into my green. I don't wanna pull it in there. And it doesn't have to be everywhere. It's just an illusion of that there is sky back there. And then just a little bit of shade. You can see mostly what's in here right now is just water. But because again, we're gonna do two layers of color just in some spots. And we'll give a little bit more illusion of the watercolor. Super easy, isn't that easy? You can all do it. I don't want anybody, I don't want any of you thinking right now in your head, that looks cute, but I can't do that because you can, you can do it. And it's paper, so if you do it once and you don't like it, do it again. And if you do it a second time and you don't like it, do it three times, do it four or five times till you finally get the knack of it. It's so easy, and especially one like this, it hardly is any colors. Let me take a second and cut this out. All right, there are no dies for this stamp set on it as it stands on its own. This is, um, the shapes are just their own stamp set. So that doesn't take any effort to cut that out. I'll put this on here first. And see, this is why you need this to go pretty close to the bottom because do, you don't have a lot of extra space that you're working with right here. Oh, I guess I'm using something else from the online exclusives because I'm using the ribbon. Also part of Card Club. The reason I keep mentioning Card Club is because if you're watching this and you're in Card Club, if you add just the stamp set um, and this other set of dies, then you'll be able to recreate this card because you'll have the ribbon and you'll have the paper. I'm gonna use different embellishments because the embellishments are sold out. So I don't, and the ones I picked for this card are perfect for it. So this is a, a trim that comes online exclusives. The link again will be down below the video. So you can see when you squish this, cause it's a metallic, it does, I, don't, I hate when ribbons get pointy, like when they get pointy. See, like if you squish it, it does that. I hate that, I can't stand that in a ribbon. It's okay, pull your ribbon, get it tight and then figure out where you want it to be, cut the ribbon, and then I'm gonna show you how to get it so it doesn't look pointy. Cause I don't like a pointy ribbon on my card. Sometimes they, they'll do it after you put it in an envelope, but we're gonna make it so for right now, at least it doesn't look like that. I've added that to the tree trunk, flip it over, give yourself a generous little amount over here. So you can pull this around. just like that, and then we'll put it on the card and then we'll fix it. So come over here and remember, it's gonna go almost to the top. And then I do wanna make sure that I hit this edge over here to grab that ribbon. And then we'll just do there. You don't, wanna, you don't need to do adhesive overkill, but you wanna make sure you get all the places. So almost to the bottom, 
and then normal on the other edges because we did cut four, just a fraction over. Now you're gonna take this and just take your bone folder or something that's a little round and just open those where you pressed it. And look how much better that looks to have a loop than a little pointy flattened yucky bow. Again, if you're putting it in an envelope, chances are it's gonna get pointed again unless you wanna stick something in it. You could probably get a piece of foam or something and stick it in and then they can take it out when they get the card because it's beautiful like that. On my other card that I made yesterday, because it was doing that, I just, I found a different technique. So you can see that if you want to see that. Then grab a dimensional. There's the gold. And add the dimensional to your watering pot. Isn't this card easy? And it's, I think it's, it's a lovely, very on-trend design of art. And it matches the paper so perfect. It's the same leaves. Gonna add our little growth takes time. And then of our embellishments, probably half of our embellishments would match because we have so many that are neutral colors, so many that are greens, so many that are silvers. I went with the flowers. So these are just our adhesive black flowers and just in the silvers because that just matches really well. You could put the gold on here too. You could do a mixture. I did, did I do three or five? I debated, they, they're kind of heavy. So I did, I doubt it was the weight factor that made me go with three. So two down by the same and just kind of one up here. Let's slide these back in here in case my cats, I can hear them roaming. They like to knock them off the table. Isn't it adorable? So completely cute. Again, a lot of online exclusives, so you're not gonna see these up here in a catalog, but I will do my very best um, to keep showing them to you guys so you don't miss out on any of them. If you do love the Hello Irresistible and the Irresistible Blooms, the stamp set, the frosted dot, the loose dots are um, currently unavailable. They will be back. Um, and then, but the stamps, I think it's the dies. I didn't look when I ordered bundles this morning for card club, they were on low inventory. It's 99% um, of the times so that means it's the dies that are on low inventory. Again, my assumption is that those will be back, but if you want them now, you need to order them ASAP. Um, this set I think is safe. It hasn't been on radars that I've noticed. So have a great day. I'm going to go Oh my goodness, make a dent in the email list. I saw right before I started filming, there was an email that I need to email Stampin' Up with our, right, our agenda for the day, which I have, but it's a hot mess. You know, when you have your notes and you don't want to send them as is to somebody, but I don't really have time to fix them. So everybody have a great one. Bye.